What's up there, Workforce? Chris here with work to game and we are picking up right where we left off in the 1 to 15 content unlock guide series here, and we are going 16 to 30 now. Now, this is going to be a lot more stuff, but hopefully this call is starting to make sense because from 1 to 15, a lot of this was introducing concepts in the game that maybe you're not familiar with, and now we're going to build on those. So at level 16, you are going to unlock your second dungeon. And so in that duty finder screen, you are now going to have Tamterra Deepcraft unlocked, and that is going to unlock uh it should unlock from a fire in the gloom main story quest so it should just feed it to you automatically and now that you have two dungeons you are going to have a duty roulette and the ability to do um, the leveling and this will give a huge amount of experience each day and then once you're at level cap um, you can start to see things like different tomes unlocked to encourage level cap players to still take advantage of their roulettes each day uh, and so this is a great way to get a lot of experience relatively simply uh, and it's a great way to learn your class because it adds each dungeon slowly because your roulette only has in it the dungeons you have unlocked uh, and so as we kind of work through this that gets you to 16 at 17 you'll see that we add copper bell mine so now we have three things in there and that will have a main story quest called into a copper hell and at this point we'll be talking about retainer access now retainers the easiest way is I always just do mine at my house, uh, but actually retainers for today, we'll go ahead and show you. Um, they are done near a, a market board in a major city. So since I'm in Gradania, we'll go ahead and jump over to that one. But there is retainers in each other city, including the later cities. Uh, as you get into expansion content like Ishgard and stuff, there are ways to manage retainers at what I'm about to show you in those cities. So retainer access um the important thing is that you go through the main storyline quest the scions of the seventh dawn if you haven't caught a theme here keep doing your main story as a new player the most important thing that you can be caught up on is story so much of this game is locked behind it and i know it can be a real drag especially if you're not super into the actual lore itself um but you've got to keep doing story so these summoning bells are how we access our retainers and retainers are not only the way that we interact with the market board and sell things in that each retainer can be selling 20 things for you at a time but they also also go on ventures little adventures if you will uh, and they can bring you back cool loot and so you can see that mine are complete ready to do that and then they have inventories that function somewhat as a form of bank space and so they're kind of the three main functions and then you'll see that we have retainer vocates there's they're in each major city uh, and then this will give you a chance to kind of unlock those and kind of see those you start with two you'll notice I had four you can add more by increasing the cost per month to your service account uh, for Final Fantasy up to I believe a cap of like 10 or something nuts and then if you create more characters each one will on your account will have access to the same number uh, the next thing you unlock at 17 is the ceremony of eternal bonding there's a special quest for this called the ties that bind this is in-game marriage it results in a ring that allows you to like teleport to each other and it's really cool there's big beautiful ceremony so if you're into that go google that get really into the whole marriage ceremony thing it's really awesome uh and it's something that is a very cool way to share the game with that one other person that you play a lot with uh and so you know i know brian's married to his wife but um, you know, I've looked at getting married to a friend that keeps quitting and playing again because he's he's a guy that I would love to have a teleport to. Now, at level 17, we also unlock Palace of the Dead. Palace of the Dead is your first deep dungeon. Uh, this is, it, it's completed via a side quest called The House That Death Built, but basically deep dungeon for the purpose of this video is an alternative PvE system that actually when you finish up in there, when you move out into the world, gives you experience. You play through every single time you kind of restart per se, uh, and you play from level one and it levels you up very quickly so you get a chance to get a taste of different classes um, and then people have found a way to of course use that to farm experience very very quickly and it's a lot of rinsing and repeating now at level 19 we are talking about materia if i open up my gear here you'll see that it has little slots on it and in those slots it says savage might materia six uh, and so there's different grades of materia but you have the ability to convert gear and converted gear comes from spirit bonding uh, and so if I go open up my armory chest and I look at different gear, um, uh, this whether or not I'm spirit bound with it has to do with how long I've used it. And so if I right click on this, you can tell whether or not something is spirit bound on whether or not you can press convert. And so if I find something that says I can convert it, that means spirit bonding is complete. There are ways to speed up spirit bonding, but the important thing is that this is a great source of materia. Materia, it's a great source of getting rid of gear that you did use for a long time. Uh, and so it's a great way to use this materia. That materia can be sold on the market board or slotted into here. And then you can actually, if there's gear in it, you can actually retrieve the materia if you'd like. Uh, and there's a various success rate on that based on the quality of that material. 
materia. So when you start to get into top level materia, you can see that there's a pretty decent chance of failure. And that kind of keeps the system interesting in that it, it helps take materia out of the system. Um, you have the ability to meld that. Uh, and so melding is the act of putting it in. But if you can't meld it, like if it's if you don't have the right crafting level to do it, there are materia melders in the cities that you can talk to and they'll do it for a fee. Uh, so no big deal there. Now at level 20, you have grand companies. Grand companies are like guilds, but it's actually with an NPC instead of players. And I'm in Gridania because I'm a twin adder. And so I spend a lot of time in Gridania. But there are three currently. Uh, so you have the Immortal Flames, uh, the Maelstrom, and the Twin Adders. And so depending on which city you pick, that will kind of lock you behind that. It really doesn't do much more than that. But it's fun to be kind of in the same one as your friends, if you don't mind. At level 20, you'll also be getting Chocobo access. Um, your Chocobo actually has like its own menu here. Uh, and so if we kind of open that up, that is called your companion. Uh, and so you have your companion guide here. They can level all the way up. After level 10, it gets a little more complex. I think they can level all the way to 20. Uh, and then you can teach them different skills and they can have a different appearance. And, and so it's a whole mesh. You can even change their color. So dive as far into chocobos as you want. You also unlock the sightseeing log. So if we go to our logs, um, then you can actually see the sightseeing log and there's a bunch of different ones here. If you like going out and exploring the world, this is a neat way to kind of do that. And uh, some of them are easy to kind of look up and some of them are not, some of them. Uh, and so you can spend a lot of time. There's riddles that kind of explain it. And uh, it's a really beautiful thing to kind of go out in the world and at least dabble with. You'll see I've touched with it, but I haven't finished it. I believe there's an achievement locked behind that. And at level 20, we'll be unlocking Holotali. And so if we open this back up, you'll see that we have our level 20 dungeon. Uh, and so we'll be adding one more dungeon to that roulette you do each day. And we'll be adding our first trial, the Bowl of Embers. And so trials, you jump over here. This is eight man content. So you're now talking about moving to, uh, you now talk about moving to the number of kind of characters that you can actually have in a dungeon. And so, you know, you can see as we move into different trials, you can see a much more intense level of stuff, but it's just the one fight. So it's usually really simple. Um, it's just that one really complex fight instead of like a whole dungeon and a whole thing. Uh, and this will be unlocked during the Lord of Inferno main storyline quest. So you should get it naturally. At level 22, there's a side quest called Occupational Hazards that gives you the Chigo minion. Uh, and then you'll also have mount speed increased to all lower level areas, which is like Middle Linosia, Lower Linosia, Central. Central Shroud, East Shroud, Western Thanalan, Central Thanalan, uh, as soon as you finish the Brotherly Love main story quest. At level 24, we open that up one more time. We move back over to the dungeon tab. You may have been looking ahead, and you'll see that we unlock a thousand maws of Toto Rock. Uh, this is MSQ. Once again, you'll notice that main story naturally carries you into your dungeons, and you can't get to these dungeons without them. So you need to be staying on that main story quest, that MSQ. You've got to be on top of that. At level 25, we're talking about advanced materia melting. Uh, there is a side quest for this called Melding Materia Muchly. Uh, and then at level 28, we will be moving into Hawk Manor. One of my favorite dungeons. I love Hawk Manor. Uh, and so as soon as you get to that main story, at 29, we'll be talking about the White Wolf Gate access, um, which is unlocked on the Broadening Horizon side quest. And then we get to level 30. Level 30, in my opinion, opens this game up in a whole new way. Level 30 is the first time this game really spreads to be something wide. Up until this point, it's been pretty repetitive, just making sure you're getting the hang of things. Uh, so if you're a WoW player, since I know a lot of people are coming over from WoW right now, I would think of this as like level 40. You're starting to talk a lot about mounts and you've moved zones and you're starting to really get into the swing of things where they can just tell you, hey, we need you to do something. And you're like, yeah, I know how to do that. Uh, and so it's not at that level cap for that original expansion. You know, so in WoW, you're originally going to 60 here. You're originally going to 50. But it is kind of that, let's call it a halfway point um, where you can really start to move into your own right and and be comfortable running roulettes on your own and make Maybe you found a guild to be a part of and you are comfortable managing your inventory and what your character has equipped and so on. Uh, this will allow you at this point to turn your class into a job by doing a class quest. If you have a class quest to unlock underneath your main story quest, which does not go here normally, there will be a little quest there. So if I were to switch over to uh, my pugilist, for example, you'll see that I have a little quest there waiting for me. And that says that, hey, you're not caught up on your pugilist main uh, quest there. And so I should go do that. Uh, and at level 30, if you catch up on those, that will 
will turn that into a job. The way a job looks is if we jump over to a class like this and we open up my inventory screen, you'll see that I have a job stone down here, uh, soul, crystal, whatever, um, and whatever they want to call them. And you'll see that this soul crystal allows me to kind of, once it goes there, you never unequip it. My warrior never has a reason to go back to being a marauder. So it pretty much just sits there and from then on, you are that job and job and class become interchangeable. Uh, there is one class that has summoner and scholar uh, locked behind it, but everybody else, it's just one job for the one class. Uh, you also get level, P you get PVP access at this point. This is full PVP access. So everybody's scaled. You are gonna see abilities you've never seen before if you do it right at level 30 and you get experience in PVP. So it's a really cool way to like, if you have, if you're like, man, I like healing in PVP, but I don't like healing in PVE, you only need to level that healer up to level 30 and then you're done and it's fine. And it can get more experience if it wants to, that's that's awesome, but it's it's great. So if you get every class in the game to level 30, then you have every class for the purpose of PVP. Um, you're also talking about the Chocobo Companion at this point. So it's no longer just a mount, it actually comes out. And this is where you actually unlock all those different skills and everything like that. So um, Chocobo Companion is is somebody, they come out uh, with Grishal Greens. You can buy this off of a vendor for 36 uh, gil a piece. So do not buy it off the market board for any price higher than that. Um, the vendors are fairly easy to find once again. Gamers Escape is a great resource if you're ever wondering where any item in the game that says it's shop sold here in the tooltip, where it's sold, it will tell you nice and easy. Uh, and so this also allows you to go into desynthesis, which is the second way to destroy this gear besides selling it on the market or selling it to a vendor. You converted it if it was Spirit Bond and then desynthesis, which if I open up my classes and jobs and I click on one of these disciples of the hand, you can see my desynthesis. It's out of a total of 1160 currently that should be increased with Shadowbringers uh, and leveling it is basically done through desynthesizing. So there's a success rate there. It's a whole ordeal. There is actually a menu in here somewhere Somewhere that makes it a little bit faster. Um, I never remember to do it, um, but it's a, it's a little bit faster if you actually desynthesize through the menu. Um, see if I can find it. Okay, so it's actually in your actions and traits. And so if we open up actions and traits with P, you can put this on a bar, you go into desynthesis and you can actually go in here and you can check different things. Like I can go in here and see what it takes and it's easier to click through. Um, it's also easy enough to literally just open up your inventory and right click and you know, if desynthesis is available, that's where it will be. Um, not every piece of gear in the game is desynthesizable. So you definitely want to keep an eye on that. Not to mention that like my, my rate is a failure here because I only have 87 skill and this takes something that says optimal skill is 380. So not even close. Um, and so just kind of keep that in mind. It's a whole neat system to dive into. You can make a lot of money at it if it's a cap, but it takes a lot of work to get there. So that is everything for level 30. Um, level 30 is, is a great place to be in the game. By this point, you should start to be comfortable with running out in the world and killing things for a quest. And if you want to get off of the main story quest for a bit, you've got several things unlocked that you can go do. And it's just a really great place to be in the game. If you're enjoying it at this point, just keep going because it only gets better. And so we're going to go ahead and stop here and we will be picking up from 31 and going all the way to 50. So my name is Chris with work to game I hope these guides are helping out. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions, especially if they're on that 16 to 30 content. And I look forward to sharing more with you and I will see you next time.